Hello fellow Scratchers, and welcome to this fun tutorial on data serialization. Did someone say save codes? Ah yes, so useful, allowing players to save their progress and enjoy our Scratch games for longer. Also, data serialization unlocks the key to adding multiple scenes to our tile-based RPG too. Now, to understand what this is all about, take a look at this oddly familiar platforming game. Hi guy! To create a save game, we'd need it to take a record of all data values at one point in time, sprite positions, count of lives, score, whatever is subject to change. And here comes serialization, where the values are translated and combined into a single long value, also sometimes called a data stream. And in Scratch, we might refer to it as a save code. The most important thing about serialization is that the process is also reversible, and will allow us to reconstruct our game at just the same point that we saved it. So, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to build two very useful custom blocks, write value and read value. Very cool! And you may already have noticed that the save code that we've created is a CSV, a comma separated value. Except we don't need to use commas. We haven't here, I've used pipes. And you'll often also see spaces used too, when appropriate. And I say when appropriate because look at this example where we join two values. Hello, and then fellow scratchers. And if we try separating them with a space delimiter, then oh man, we can't tell any longer that this was two values at all. It looks like three. But easily solved right, we just pick a better delimiter, like a pipe. The rule would be never to choose a delimiter that will appear within any of our values. But that is not as easy as it sounds. For no matter what letter or symbol we choose as a delimiter, there's always a chance that it might get used in one of our game variables and completely break our game. But don't throw your keyboards out of the window quite yet for escape characters come to our rescue. I'll explain more on these shortly, so keep watching until the end of the video for the complete picture. But gosh, I think we'd do well to begin coding this up. Guys, let's get scratching. This is going to be very backpackable, so we'll create a brand new project for it and a sprite we will name Save Code. The first thing we need is a variable to hold the save code for this sprite only and set it to the empty value. Good. Now we make a new custom block named write value. And it has an input named text. And we can definitely run without screen refresh for this has to be very fast. Then to join the value of the text input onto the end of the existing save code, we set save code to itself save code joined with the new text input value. But don't forget to add the delimiter to our pipe character. Duplicate the line and join that with a pipe. Now let's see this in action. We'll begin by setting save code to the empty value and then write the value hello. If we give that a click, you can see that we've added hello and then a pipe delimiter to the end. Great. So following that by fellow scratchers and the number one, two, three, and we see all three values serialized appropriately. Very good. However, although this is an okay way of serializing values, we will run into trouble trying to write values that contain that pipe character themselves, but we'll come back to that shortly. For now, let's move on. We need that read value block to deserialize our values back out of the save code once more. Make a new custom block named read value, and again run without screen refresh. Now each time we run this, it wants to return a value, so make a new variable for that named value, for this sprite only, and this must start empty. We'll want to loop through the save code, building up this value variable a letter at a time. We don't know how many times to repeat yet, so loop forever, because we can always break out of it later. Now let's get the first letter of the save code. Hmm, except we need to be able to loop through this a letter at a time, so we need a variable to say where we are up to. Name it save index, or IDX for short, for this sprite only. We begin at the first letter, set save index to 1, and then we can get letter save index of save code. So that should begin as H, 
Perfect. Huh. Hello, fellow scratchers. We'll store this H in a new variable, naming it C for character. And that's for this sprite only too. And then we set it. Okay, now we have the letter at position one. We change save index by one already for the next loop around. But before we go ahead and add this to our value variable, what if the letter we just found in variable C is equal to a pipe? Well then, we would have found the end of the next value, and we could stop this script, breaking out of the forever loop right here. And if it's not a pipe, then swell! Set value to the result of joining itself, value, to our letter in variable C. I'm loving that because after adding that letter, this repeat goes around again, and now we are looking at letter 2 and 3 and 4, building up this value until we hit a pipe. Shall we give that a test? Start by setting save index to 1 with a click and then drop in a read value block and click that. And there we go. Value has become the word hello, exactly five letters long and perfectly formed. If we click the read value block again, we get fellow scratches. And then again, one, two, three. I love that, don't you? But now that we've reached the end of the save code, who wants me to click this block again to see what happens next? And boom, Scratch has gone into meltdown. This script is running forever. Stop the project <laughs> if you can. Okay, this is not the best result. When there are no more values to read out of the save code, it would be preferable to just return an empty value and not carry on running forever. How would we do that? Well, rather than just stopping when C is equal to a bar, we could also stop when save index is greater than the length of the save code. That would make sense, right? We've gone past the end? Great, well, we could do that, and it works. But that's a bit of an expensive long way to do it. It just so happens that any letter after the end of a value will equal the empty value. So we can just compare C to the empty value instead. See, it still works a treat. But did you think that that was the best we could do? You see, apple contains an A, yep, no surprise there. And bar contains a bar, yep, apparently so, that's good, good. So tell me, does bar contain the empty value? Hmm, well, that's a tricky one. Maybe? Yes, it does. Interesting. So I guess every value also contains the empty value. So instead of checking whether C is the pipe or the empty value, we can just check if bar contains C. And that means C is a bar or the empty value. Perfect. So guys, everything is working great. We can happily serialize and deserialize values. So are we done? Well, we could be if we are happy to take responsibility that no value written to this save code will contain a pipe. If unfortunately we can't guarantee that, then, well, let's see what happens, shall we? We wrote three values into the save code, so there should be three coming out. Good. Uh oh, fellow colon, mm hmm. Scratches, and one, two, three, that was four values, and we all knew it was going to happen. So, how do we fix this? The answer is using escaping. How this works is, whenever we ask to write a value containing a pipe, we escape the pipe by preceding it with a backslash. This tells our serializer to treat the next letter as part of the value, and not a delimiter. Right, we're going to require some space to work on this write value script, as we'll now need to process it a letter at a time, looking out for the pipes. Sound familiar? We'll start at letter 1 reusing the save index for the job. And this time, we know how many letters to loop through, so we can use a repeat for the length of the text input. Next up, we get a letter. So set C to letter save index of, but not of the save code. This time we are looking through the text input value. Okay, so now is the time to watch out for that pipe character. If C is equal to pipe, then this needs escaping. 
and that's as simple as adding a backslash to the save code. Just set it to itself joined with a backslash. Followed by the actual character. But put that outside the if. This way we add every letter to the save code, but the pipes are always preceded by a backslash. Does that make sense? Finally, we mustn't forget to add on the last pipe to finish off. <laughs> Wonderful, I think that should do it. Smash that test script up here. <laughs> what the? We've got loads of H's, F's and 1's and this is not hello fellow anything. I wonder what I did wrong. If you fancy a challenge, can you figure out what it was? Just pause the video and take a look at the scripts. If you got it, then drop a fixed it in the comments so I can applaud you. So why would we be getting the same letter over and over again? Perhaps because we never updated the save index variable? It stays on letter 1. Simply drop in a change, save index by 1, at the end of this repeat loop. Right, this time we are in for a treat. Our three values have been serialised, bug squashed, and this time the emoticon pipe is preceded by a backslash. Nice. Only problem is, now we need to be able to handle reading back these backslashes. If I scroll down to the read value script, you'll see that the second value we read still breaks at the pipe. But worse, that extra backslash is showing as part of the value, and that's not right. We need to catch those backslashes before they are added. Put an if before the last set value, and check if c is a backslash. If it is, then we throw it away, because it's the next character that we're interested in now. The top two lines in this forever loop do that job, so duplicate them and pop them in this if. So if we find a backslash, get the next letter instead and join that to our value in its place. Solid. Let's give it a test. Set save index to 1 and then read value. Good. Read value again. Oh boy, now this is more like it. We've successfully read the correct value, including the pipe, and the escaping has gone. I love it when a plan comes together. We are almost done then, but are you thinking what I'm thinking? We solved being able to include pipes by escaping them with a backslash symbol, but doesn't that mean that we have to be careful not to add backslashes to our written values too? <laughs> yes indeed, it appears we have just swapped one problem for another. Yep, yeah, the backslash is missing, but luckily this has a simple solution that fixes everything. Under the right value script, we currently only escape pipes. But what if we escape backslashes too? Simple as adding an OR here. But I'm going to do them both using my favourite contains block again. If pipe OR backslash contains C, then C is either a backslash or a pipe. Interesting. So what does that now look like after it's serialised? Well, the backslash has, as we expected, also been escaped by adding a backslash before it. Remember, any letter after a backslash will make it into the red value. So I'm expecting the second one won't be skipped this time around. Set save index to 1 and read hello fellow colon backslash scratches. So awesome! A perfectly accurate result. And that is it! We've created a very robust data serializer. And if I were you, I would make a copy of these scripts just as they are in a separate project because they will come in very handy for multiple projects in the future, including the next episode of my popular RPG series. In that episode, I will demonstrate how to create backwards compatible save codes and efficiently serialize a complex grid list map. But just as we end, let's just review how we can use these two blocks. To create a save code, we set save code to the empty value and then write each value to that in turn. And then to load these values back out of the save code, we set save index to one and then use three read values, one for each of the write values. Of course, it doesn't make much sense unless you actually have some variables to save. So let me create some as a demonstration player x and y, and lives. Each of these I write to the save code. Then to restore each of these we need to pop in a set block after each read, 
to assign the read value to the correct variable. Just watch this, I'll make these into sliders and then set them to some random values. Now click here to create our save code. Then I can switch the sliders around, but if I click to load from the save code, all three sliders returned to their saved locations. Awesome! Often, to allow a player to download a save code, we'll add the save code to a visible list. We do this because it's the only way to make the text copyable by our users. A show list then to make that visible, and then to load a save code back, just pop it in the ask block. Finally, set save code to the user's answer. And hey presto, we can restore our games. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the next exciting episode when it drops. I look forward to continuing this series with a detailed look at how to construct backwards compatible save codes in the next episode of the RPG series. However, this technique is super useful for all sorts of projects and I'd love to hear from you in the comments what you have planned for it. And that though is the end of this video. Thanks for watching, have a great week ahead and scratch on guys.